Hello everyone and um, welcome to this video series on Kaspersky Unified Monitoring and Analysis Platform or Kuma. In this series we will present a, uh, a few different training videos which is for the working on Kaspersky Unified Monitoring and Analysis Platform. In this video we will demonstrate the installation of Kuma in an all-in-one configuration. So all system components are then located on a single server and in this deployment option, it is suitable for small installations or typically testing. So in an all-in-one installation, it is quite straightforward, but there are quite a few things that you of course need to be aware of. So for example, if we run the command hostname space minus F, it should return the full name of the server, consisting of the server name and at least the first level domain. So when Kuma is installed on this host name, a self-signed certificate will be issued to this host name. You need to make sure that it resolves to an IPv4 address as part of your checks. If this is not the case, you need to create an appropriate record on the DNS server or of course go ahead and edit the host file. Once that is done, everything should be fine. There's one last thing to check and that is whether the Python 3 package is installed. Since this virtual machine is a new server, this check is not necessary and we will simply install the missing package. Once all of these preliminary and necessary checks have been completed, you can now proceed. When proceeding with the installation of Kuma, you would need to go to the folder that is containing the Kuma distribution. The installation, of course, is then also going to require a license file and an archive with the distribution package. So what we will then go ahead and do is we are going to unpack said archive. Once this archive has been unpacked, you will notice that um, we can already go ahead and copy over the license file that was in the unpacked archive. And in this case, we're going to unpack that into the roles Kuma files subfolder. And this license file must be named license.com. Key. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the distribution folder. Now all of the remaining actions will take place inside of this folder and you will notice that there are two template files that describe the target Kuma installation. In the following videos we will of course consider the distributed installation but for this one we're going to look at the all-in-one installation itself. So what we're going to go ahead and do and look at the single installation file we're going to rename it and or copy it and we remove the template extension. We open up this file um, for editing and then from here what we're going to do is basically have a look and then you can see that it lists out the installation parameters for our all-in-one installation. Note that the deploy underscore example underscore services is set to true which means that multiple collector uh, microservices or correlators and storage will be configured and installed. So what we need to do is specify the actual name of the host that we are installing on, as shown earlier. The server is named kuma.example.local. This server will be the kernel, collectors, correlator, and storage server. Now everything is ready to start the installer and run the installation script and specify our inventory file as parameters. As soon as the installation has started, you will notice that we will need to go ahead and accept the EULA. So after we have accepted that, the installation will proceed. It will take approximately four minutes to complete on a server that's running currently two CPUs and eight gigabytes of RAM. During the installation, Kuma is going to issue a self-signed certificate. So a corresponding warning may appear in the browser. Later, you can install a corporate certificate for the web console as described in the documentation. During the installation, an admin account is created with the default password 
which is also listed in the documentation. So the console is going to open up a page that's going to contain a graphical panel with information about detected alerts and the widgets are empty because at the moment no alerts are present. We can go to the section resources active services area and this displays all microservices that were deployed and configured when Kuma was installed. These are the storage, correlator and for collector services that listen on specific TCP and UDP ports. The system is fully prepared to receive and process events. For example, the CEF or common event format collector listens on TCP port 5140. This is the port that the test source sends events to. Let's go to the section of events processed by the common event format collector and make sure that the collector is accepting Ceph um, events and passing them successfully. In some cases, it may be useful to turn on the radar. Um, this will allow you to see the arrival of events for the selected time interval. In this case, an interval of five minutes. And ladies and gentlemen, this completes the Kuma all-in-one installation tutorial. Thank you for joining.